Hello and welcome. Dang it. Hello and welcome to the ninth or tenth episode, the 15th of, episode. <laughs> of Straight Out of College. I'm Daniel, a student to be graduate from the University of Toledo. Uh, and then also Sawyer's here. Hey. Sawyer, he's cool. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> And uh, so for any new people joining us, Straight Out of College is a podcast that focuses on what life is like or what it could be like after graduation. We interview college students and graduates to see their perspective on the transition from college to post-graduation and just, you know, see how their their day is going, how how life is going. So today we will... Wait, Daniel, do you think there are new people listening to this? Do you think everyone's already just listening to it? Dude, we got one full new subscriber from last time. And I think that's the last person we needed to get everyone, right? That's right. He's a huge trendsetter. So today we'll be interviewing the one, the only Joseph Stibley, and happy to be here. That's right. Oh, didn't know he was here. Majoring in school and stuff. School and stuff. Yeah, but it has like a more specific name. Like a math, 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 something? math teacher. Something within it. Yeah. A teacher math. T- teacher math. He's a teacher math. <laughs> <laughs> bachelor's degree in teachers and math. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Teacher bachelor, bachelor math. Yeah, so that was a good interview. We talked about math and teachers. We running. S- we talked a lot about running. Yeah. Like marathons. And bloody nipples. Bloody, bloody areas of the body. We surprisingly didn't talk too much about South Dakota. That was uh, quite the shock. Um, but we I def- think he's going to keep an open mind, though. Yeah, I think so. We definitely did have a lot of really good talks about college and what to prepare for and all the good stuff, mentorship, all the stuff you need to do to do stuff, etc. Yep, all the stuff you need to do to do stuff. Yeah. So we're going to move on to that one special segment. uh, That you've all been waiting for. All been waiting for. We weren't able to do it last week, so we're going to catch on to this week and just do it now I guess freelance negotiation so previously in freelance negotiation we talked to Andika who wanted me to invest in his upwork.com personal information transfer Um, and so I gave him you know my address social security number birthday all the normal things you would give someone but you had some complications with Skype I did I wasn't able to open my Skype account and which is common yeah, so I think that's a good place to start off. So if you want to start off with the last line, we're just jumping from there. Downloading Skype is very easy for you. Please download it and let's start creating Upwork account. My phone isn't compatible. I insist. Let's do this through email. Uh, that or Fiverr. Either of those work for me. You should create a new Upwork account on your computer. How do I do that? When you are on, when you are on your computer, contact me via Skype. Can you understand me? Sorry, my English is bad. I used to be from Canada. Can you fill in the account from the information I gave you? Upwork need identity verification and video verification. And you should buy a new computer for me. I also pay that price. The price range is $100 to $200. And I will use this computer. What I mean is that you should create a new Upwork account with your IP address. Could you do that for me? I have an idea. Monthly $100 will add up. That's $6,000 in five years. I'll make you a deal. Pay me $500 up front now and never pay me again. Don't, Don't you want to save money? It's a good deal. I will make my mind after I have a call with you. I'm deaf. I hope this doesn't complicate things. Is this okay? I'd really like to help you out. I have a lot of money, so gaining the money from this would be nice, but I really just want to help you out. I hope you can figure this out. Okay. Please contact me on Skype. And that's where we're going to cut it for today. So as you can see, things started to escalate. Put in the comments section what you think is going to happen next. And don't forget to subscribe. All right. Um, so yeah, we're going to move on to the interview section. With the one, the only, Joseph Stibley. So let me tell you about what happened to me the other day. What happened? So I was uh, walking uh, through uh, Lower End Manhattan, Mm -hmm. and I got approached by somebody, and they're like, you're Sawyer, right? I was like, yeah, Mm -hmm. straight out of college. They're like, I listened to the Caleb episode the other week, 
and he gave such great advice mm -hmm. that I'm now going to be an exercise science major. Wow. Yeah. He switched majors. Yeah, yeah they switched majors. This dude was like in his 40s or something. He's just going to like junior college, but yeah, he's going to switch from uh, accounting to exercise science. That's impressive. You know, yeah. that's, that's the thing that this um, podcast was made to do is to make you really think about your life choices. And so we actually have a, a really good friend of Caleb Colon, uh, the other man myth legend, Joseph Stibley. So welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. So Joe, could you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? You could say your major, your year of graduation, where you graduated from, and then a fun fact about yourself. All right, so I graduated from the University of Toledo in spring of 2019, so a few short two months ago, but it feels like forever since you graduate college. Um, and then I graduated with a mathematics degree, so hopefully I'll be a teacher. My fun fact is hmm, that I have completed a marathon before. Oh, well. That's true. Speaking of which, I just joined the Toledo Roadrunners Club, and I think you get like a discount for that. Really? So, yeah. Where, where did you join that at? Roadrunners? Yeah. This is actually not a sponsor, so. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> no, so I was trying to look for places to start running because I have a lot of free time and I want to stay in shape and I like to meet people. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of asked on Facebook and people gave me advice and. Turns out Alec is actually, he recently just joined us too. We interviewed him in the first podcast, so that'll be You cool. know, you can get shoe deals with it too. Once, if you actually do get into running, usually do have discounts if you're part of those clubs. So watch out for those. Awesome. I, do, I also joined the Toledo Runners Club off the, it's called Starva app or something. It's okay. a running app. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's a Toledo Runners. Look into that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Is that just it like, like, it tracks your, it's like a social media for, for running. Okay, that's kind of cool. And there's different clubs with it, and there's a Toledo Runners Club, and they have, like, events. It's yeah. Cool. So I figured there'd be a bunch of different groups to join, just I needed to find them. So And there are. There's, like, a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so... That's not what this is about. <laughs> no, no. We were talking strictly college and nothing else. No, but... <laughs> um, so you said you are getting your master's? Yeah, so I'm going to be going back to school this fall to get my master's in education at UT. Um, I'm going to be working part-time on the side, and then hopefully I'll start teaching a year from now. Cool, cool. What, like, grade level, or like, what do you want to teach? You said mathematics, but... Yes, yeah, so I ideally want to teach high school, so I either want to co teach freshmen or seniors, because I want to coach, so I think it'd be cool to coach my seniors mm -hmm. as a varsity coach or to scare the lights out of the freshman as a varsity <laughs> coach, so, yeah. And we have a, a running joke, me and Joe and some other groups of people, that Joe is an athlete, and the funny thing about athletes is that they do a lot of running, you know? I actually just ran into this scenario um, doing Ultimate just yesterday um, where I just cut my toes, like my toenails, and I cut them too short, and the seams of my sock oh. was running into that cut. So the whole time I'm running... Did you say the seam of your sock? <laughs> the seam. Okay. That's correct. You heard me right. And so my toe could have been worse. It was a little red at the end of the day. But if I would have just wore my... Stra <laughs> I can't even do that long. If I would have just wore my Stradline socks, I wouldn't have had that issue. Where would I get something like that? Well, if you look at the description of the video... There will be a link to Strideline Socks website. Is there a relevance to the to the um, Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me let me backtrack here. Yeah, you're playing ultimate. Mm -hmm. And why were you not wearing your Strideline socks? You know, I was in a rush. Because I feel lot. like this is what podcast number six or seven or something like that. Yeah. And you've been, you know, you've talked heavily about Strideline socks. Not gonna lie, I was in a rush. I actually got there a half hour late. Okay. It's the honest and you truth. just grab, you just blindly grab the wrong one. Yeah. Okay. Well, Unfortunately. That's, that's okay. That sounds like it's more on you. Yeah. But if you enter the access code, or not access code, discount code, MTD, you can get a mighty fine discount. Now how much money are you making off of that? And am I getting anything also for that since I joined in? What do you mean? I'm not making money. Okay. No, this is just this is just you just being no, a super I just, fan. No, I really like Stradline socks. So how was Frisbee yesterday? 
It was good. Did you hear something? No, I was honestly uh, just wondering how. No, it was good. I I got some points. Um, I scored a lot. I didn't drop the disc at all. I did really good. And then, yeah, so that was fun. And you're in the B League. I'm in. Well, yes, B League, but that's like the, um, like competitive league. So it was a good you time. Play frisbee yeah. at all? I frequent the sport when I'm with Daniel. And okay. That's about it. The yeah. extent of my <laughs> knowledge yeah. is playing catch with him because as a baseball player, mm -hmm. you're used to like snapping your wrist yeah. when you throw a ball. You're not supposed to snap your wrist, wrist when you throw a frisbee. False. <laughs> well, like, it's a different snap. Yeah, it's different, yeah. but I don't like it, so I just only throw it this way, which is the wrong way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you initially were not in the major that you're currently in, so could you tell us about that? Because I went through the same switch. How did you know time. about? How did you know that about me? For friends. What? These are all your friends you're bringing on here? You told me these are random people you know nothing about. <laughs> yeah, well. But yes, I did switch my major. I was in civil engineering my first year and a half in college. And then, uh, similar to your story, I went out on my first co-op. And I just realized that it was not for me. And that I was chasing money and chasing the wrong things in life. So I always wanted to be a teacher. I was actually planning on getting my master's in education anyways as a freshman. So once I realized I completely did not like engineering, I decided it was best to go into a relevant major where I could graduate on time but still be a teacher. So that's why I went into mathematics. Because as much as I hate numbers, I'm decent at them. How far were you into your schooling when you decided that when you did your co-op? Um, I had taken three semesters of classes, and then I went on co-op spring of my sophomore year. So it didn't really affect anything with graduating or anything like that? Graduated perfectly on time. Um, engineering, you take so many math classes mm -hmm. that I was Yeah, ahead. probably had you covered, didn't you? I was ahead of a normal wow. mathematics major. So that worked out? Very well, yes. Have you always wanted to go into teaching then, like since you were younger in high school before that? Since high school, but... Like many kids are scared of money. Mm -hmm. I was talked into majoring in engineering when you get there and you realize there's a lot of people that actually don't want to do it. They're mm -hmm. just all there for the money side of it. So mm -hmm. something to think about. And then aren't you in not interning, but aren't you getting like experience somewhere? So this summer I am working at a preschool called St. Catherine of Siena Early Childhood Education Center as like an assistant teacher for three to five year olds. So three to five year olds are gonna be the same as high school students, really hard to reason with and tell yeah. them what to do. Yeah, there's probably so. that's probably a good balance right there. It's those in between years where it's different. So it's a lot of good experience. I mean, I get to play with kids all day long for forty hours a week and I get paid for it. So you can't find a better summer job than that. Are you gonna teach them advanced math? <laughs> Honestly they might understand it more than yeah. a high school kid. <laughs> Cool. It's crazy now with like looking because like when I was in elementary school like the the progression of like how we learn like math is just like so much more advanced. It just keeps getting more advanced with the younger kids. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And then you had to take coding classes, didn't you? I did not. The no? extent of my coding classes was taking AutoCAD and engineering, oh, which shoot. is even coding. And then for my mathematics courses. I highly advise learning Python and Maple, but I was never taught that in my classes. I think they just kind of thought we knew it, which doesn't work very well in college. So I, w I think I'm this summer or next summer I'm going to try to teach myself Python. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's so, are you teaching yourself Python, David. I learned a little bit through um, one of the, uh, the 3D softwares I use. It has uh, Python plugged into it. But yeah, it's it's tough. But one of the things I found out is that like you have to use it in the CGI industry, you have to use it apparently in teaching a little bit, and in the medical industry, it's like something you have to do everywhere. I feel like they should have it in like elementary school or public schools more because Can I feel you explain like to me what that is. Coding? No, oh, you're talking about okay, you're just talking about so, coding. Sorry, yeah, yeah Python is just a different, different version of Python. Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay. But like my younger siblings, they're in grade school and they have coding classes once a week at like the third, fourth, fifth grade wow, levels. That's good. So they probably know more than I do okay. when it comes to coding. But that's... yeah, they're starting to huh. 
for your um, elementary schools in order to get like blue star status I think mm-hmm. which is like the highest level of elementary school you have to have like coding and like advanced mathematics at a younger age so it's like getting younger and younger they're teaching them that stuff it's a good color for the most prestigious level I like that color <laughs> it's a very good color it is but um yeah coding is really good though it's because um for for like people to be learning like younger people because automation's definitely picking up and it's going to be i personally think the future of everything is going to be more work focused towards that and automation just because that means there's less like um artificial not artificial there's less like human work that has to be done and just makes things more uh efficient so correct why work something out by hand when you can plug it into a computer Mm -hmm. and get an answer in 10 seconds maybe exactly speaking of the graph computer graphics did you see toy story 4 yet no i I saw it on monday i I just saw it last night we can't talk about it too much now but but. (laughs) that that is something like blew me away was just like how it looked like initially i don't even remember toy story 3 looking that good and obviously the other two before that but i was Wow, this is this looks insane. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Was it like when you say good, was it photorealistic good or just like pretty good? Photo. I thought it was like photorealistic. I felt like, like it I, was real life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was in like just it was insane. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. And, and, I, and I honestly like when I saw it, I thought of you. I was like, he's gonna he's gonna enjoy that part of it. Definitely. And like that's the crazy thing is there's a lot of CGI that you don't even know is out there like in commercials and things and you don't even recognize that it's CGI and, unless someone points it out to you. And like there's there's so many critics that, or not even critics, just people that are like, oh it's bad CGI, but so much of the CGI you don't even recognize is there because it's so good and of course they're not going to comment on that because that, they think it's real. So yeah, it's insane. You should definitely go see that as soon as you can. I'm thinking about seeing it Saturday because I got... Okay, so I'm watching presidential debate tonight, and then presidential, or not presidential, democratic debate, sorry. Oh, is that one tonight? Tonight. The There's first. a debate on tonight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is They're it already the first doing one. this stuff? It's just the democrat, it's just, but it's, it's only like Elizabeth Warren and like the other lower every, ones. Yeah, it's like Warren and, and then tomorrow's the other of, one. Dude, yeah, Yang Yang. <laughs> and that's, that's one, one of the things I was thinking about when I brought up automation, is he's really big on that, and like, Okay, I'm gonna talk politics, but this is. Oh boy. I'm sorry, guys, but this is literally. <laughs> literally, okay. So this is how I've spent, and we're done. <laughs> this is how I spent. No listeners. We're the, live with zero. The viewers. past two weeks at work, I've just been looking up random interviews with him, just because I've got, grown obsessed with this dude. Basically, like his main thing is just like universal income, and. What he wants to do is give everyone a thousand dollars, which sounds very socialistic, and I can see why people think that, but it's not. Um, basically, the money would be coming from automation, which would cover like a third of it. Another third would be covered from, um, from like um, programs that are already in place. So like you know how you have food stamps and all that. You basically be able to get a thousand dollars, and that's including whatever money you're already getting. So you can opt into that or decide not to. And then the other money is from uh, value added taxes, which is basically putting taxes on certain goods, which he wants to focus that more towards like luxurious goods where people like don't need those items. And it basically adds up to the amount of money that would cost for that. I think it's two trillion dollars that he would need, but it would cover all of it. So. And it would help with automation because automation is taking over trucker people's jobs and because they're going to have self-driving trucks and it's going to take over a lot of retail because they have the like the the voices where it sounds like a human but it's not so that's going to be taking a lot of people's jobs and so basically this is just like a step to prepare for the automation taking over well it's the scary thing about teaching is like some people say teaching is a dying industry because you can have one person record a lesson and they could, in theory, use that as an online class for everyone in the entire nation. So, so like, it's kind of scary as teachers. You got to hope that the administrators and people with power do not have value mm-hmm. like a human teaching you in a classroom. Definitely. And, like, even with that, like, they're, like if you want to pay a bunch of money, there's, like, CGI classes I can take where they have those... Uh, the best of the industry people teaching the lessons, but then if you pay a, like a thousand dollars for that class, like you'll have access to that person too. 
Um, and because having that person to help you really... Are they live lectures or is it just something they already recorded? It's, I think it's pre... Like some of them, it's, it's, it alternates, but some are pre-recorded and then like you can contact them for advice with, if you're paying extra money. But yeah, I, I can see why they would go the route of making it online just because you can just record it. If you have someone that teaches it really well, I could see that. Um, but at the same time, when you need assistance with specific things, you definitely need that like one-on-one -on -one connection. And then also there is something just about being there. It's kind of like listening to your music on your, your phone versus being at the concert. There's just that atmospheric difference that you don't get when you're not actually there, which that's not really something you can replace just yet. So I think, I think it'll be good for teaching for your generation. At least for my... Yeah. <laughs> how, how is uh, like teaching in math in high school, is it changing more to online or is it still like book and pencil, like in a, in a classroom? I think it's just like the homework is more like more going online. towards online. It was like I had math Excel in high school. I don't know if you guys had that at all, but it was just like thirty questions you had to do a week, which it was kind of nice from the fact that it was like a chegg type of thing mm -hmm. that Safe. we use in college, where you have like four chances to answer the question. The way my teachers used it, it was just completion points mm -hmm. from homework. Mm -hmm. And then it would be like a step-by-step -step solver if you didn't know how to do it. Okay. So like from that aspect, it was nice because in the old days when everyone did paper and pencil, it was really hard for a teacher to go through every single problem mm -hmm. with every single student. Because sometimes one student has a completely different problem than another student mm -hmm. in a question. So like from that aspect, it was nice. It also like sucked because if you figured out like the patterns and the questions, mm -hmm. you could just like guess the answer yep. and you'd get it. Yep. It's also more environmentally friendly. <laughs> Saving trees. And that's right. what this podcast is all about. <laughs> it's secret uh, agenda. Save the rainforest. Yep. Right. <laughs> Hashtag trash. <laughs> but so that would be not a bad idea for you to do. It would be like start making online lessons on YouTube or something. And then, just in case that does happen, you can be like, So it got me through college. I Google how to do it, because my teachers weren't necessarily always the best. <laughs> and you can take it one step further. Not only could you make a video, but YouTube now has this feature where you can do the, um, uh, like, the Oculus Rift view on your phone or whatever. Like, you know what I'm talking about? The... Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, virtual reality. You can now upload those videos, too. So you can really put yourself in the experience if you really wanted to. and Because I don't... Think, Does it put you like in a classroom? Like, yeah, so like you could right there you could go. choose where you teach the lecture and teach it. And so that way, oh, like for example, <laughs> if you're doing, let's say, some sort of crazy math experiment, you can put that person in the environment. And that's I don't, very cool. I don't think that's a thing that's been done yet. So it's very cool. If you want to make the investment, what's the thing that Matt has the the attachment for his iPhone or whatever? Oh, uh, his Nike. Nixon it's like you something. you put it on top of the phone and then it does like a 360 view. Yeah, yeah. So if you were to get that, it's like a little bit of an investment, but or you could just borrow it from Matt. Or you could just borrow it from Matt. <laughs> yeah, that too, that works. But that'd be a pretty cool thing to do. But yeah. Going back to the uh, what's his name? Alex Yang is that his name? Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Yang Gang. Okay. Is he is he always is he a career politician or what's his background? So his background is he's actually his parents were from I believe somewhere in Asia, obviously because he's he looks, it's very Asian. <laughs> uh, he, he likes was, to yeah. he likes to joke around that the opposite of Trump is an Asian man that likes math. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, he started off as a lawyer, did it for about five months and hated it. So he went to entrepreneurship and so he did a few startups that ended up not working out. And then he switched to some other company where their whole thing was uh, finding people jobs and like his company that he was CEO, CEO of, he got recognition from the president and everything and he was very successful. And he's very familiar with like Silicon Valley and the uh, technology industry and all that. So he's very aware of what's to come in the future. Um, but so he's like not a politician, mm -hmm. um, which I think is a good thing because politicians tend to have people paying the money. And he's not, that's another big thing for him is he's not having any big corporation really paying him money. Like he had a few give him like, like $10,000 just to start everything up. But after that, 
all those donations have been through supporters. Well, like, in order to run for office, you actually have to raise a certain amount of money by a certain time. Yeah. So, like, you're not allowed to, like, continue. Yep. Right. And he's... The crazy thing is he's been hitting those just from these smaller supporters. The average donation is $19, which is less than what Bernie Sanders' average donator is, oh. which is, like, huge for that. Didn't... I think Bernie broke a record or something for reaching that number once he announced, like, mm. the fastest or something crazy like that. Yeah. But, like, Yang just seems like a very down-to-earth person. Is he younger? He's, like, 40, 44, I think. So, yeah. But he's, like, very down-to-earth. He seems very humane and not, like, politician-y. And he also, all of his, like, everything on his platform, which he has, like, I think over 100 things, which is a lot for a platform, He like, everything's backed up with, like, statistical solutions that make sense. Mm -hmm. So. I think he wants to have any chance that he has to come on the podcast too. <laughs> oh, for sure. And you know, that's a really cool thing is that's how Yang really got known is for all of his podcasts he's been on. That's what really brought him out and kind of in the public's eyes is through podcasts. So Andrew Yang, if you want to be a part of the most exclusive podcast out there, what are we at? I think we're at nine subscribers right now. Um, you can be a part of this exclusive organization. And I know you love podcasts and... We just so happen to be a podcast. So, Andrew Yang. But that's not our guest right now. <laughs> no, but even better, we got Joseph Stibley. Man, the myth, the legend. Oh, I'm allowed to talk again? Yeah. So this is the part you would ask us questions. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you take it over. You take it over from here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when you uh, get your master's degree and... You're the world's greatest math teacher. Where do you want to teach? Do you want to stay local or do you want to eventually move out of Ohio, go somewhere nicer? Yeah, so me and my fiance um, are looking probably to stay in Toledo for the next five years just because she'll be starting medical school next fall. So ideally, I'll probably try to find a teaching position here in the Toledo area, either Catholic or private. And then uh, once she completes her medical school, She's looking about possibly joining the Navy, so who knows where we'll go with that if we go to a base. And then ideally, though, I want to end up back in Cleveland teaching at my alma mater, Holy Name High School, hashtag Green Wave, just because I enjoyed it there and I had a lot of really cool teachers. So I just want to be a part of that environment and give other kids what I got as a high school student. That's the goal, but mm -hmm. life has a lot of side roads, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. And like from what I've heard, the teaching industry can be a little competitive. Have you like what's what's your take on that? Um, it is competitive. Luckily, with like math and science and STEM teachers, it's easier to get a job. Mm -hmm. Whereas history and English, sometimes it's a lot harder to find a position, just because the world is moving towards the math and science route and less away from like the arts. Yeah. So it's a lot easier to find a job either. I know a lot of schools are even hiring, like we talked about coding teachers. So like usually if you have a background in coding, they'll hire you like automatically. Mm -hmm. So I think it won't be too competitive, but it's definitely, I probably won't get the job that I want, like mm -hmm. the ideal job right away. I'll but you'll have to work towards it. You'll eventually get like a job initially though. Like there is a, Somewhat of a demand for it. Correct. correct. <laughs> yes, which is always nice when graduating. You just hope academia. teachers retire and don't stay there forever. <laughs> yeah. And um, I was talking to my mom, actually, who is also a teacher, about how uh, doing math is kind of good, especially with your background of engineering, because you'll be able to actually apply it to real-life scenarios mm -hmm. and kind of give a reasoning as to not necessarily how but also why yeah i can answer the question of why do we have to learn this that's what everyone always asks <laughs> in math class at high school and middle school especially middle school would you be down to doing middle school because i feel like i personally would love elementary school or high school but i don't think i'd be able to stay in middle school mm. yeah so my certification will be 7 through 12 okay um ideally i would like to stay in high school but I wouldn't mind 7th um, or 8th grade, possibly at the beginning of my career, just to mm. get like my feet wet. Yeah. And then after that, maybe definitely move into the high school setting. Because nothing against middle schoolers. I know we probably have a few middle schoolers listening to this podcast right now. Yeah, it's it's actually very popular uh, amongst middle schoolers. Because, you know, so. they're getting ready for college life and everything. But um, 
I didn't even like myself as in middle schools. I don't think anybody does. <laughs>